Es ist eine Weile her, dass wir mit Luca Diamond, Lucapa Diamond gesprochen haben, einem Diamantproduzenten aus Australien. Das Unternehmen verfolgt allerdings mehrere Projekte gleichzeitig und wir wollen mal hören, wie es darum steht. Wir sprechen jetzt mit Stephen Weatherall, dem Managing Director des Unternehmens, und wollen uns ein Update geben lassen. Stephen, welcome. It's been a while since we last talked and a lot of things have been happening at Lucapa. Um, first of all, um, perhaps let's talk about the recent developments in Angola. Um, things have been going well operationally, it seems, uh, in the first quarter. Um, so could you please give us a short rundown of what the numbers were and uh, perhaps an outlook of uh, how the second quarter started? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Bjorn. Um, thank you for having me back on uh, Golden Best. Um, yeah, absolutely. We, we, we have had a, a very strong start to, to 2018. Uh, we have just released our quarterly report that, uh, that show that. Uh, notwithstanding the, the wet season uh, and the impact that it normally has on, on the efficiencies, uh, our volumes treated of uh, just shy of 62,000 bulk cubic meters uh, for the quarter are well on target. Our carrot recoveries of uh, 4,500 carrots for the quarter are ahead of last year, uh, and that includes uh, more than 50 special sized diamonds. Uh, those diamonds greater than 10.8 carats that we recovered in the quarter as well. Within those uh, plus 50 special stones, we, we also managed to recover two additional diamonds um, greater than 100 carats. So uh, certainly uh, operationally a, a very strong start to, to 2018. Um, those strong results saw us sell those diamonds uh, for approximately 10.8 million US dollars um, at an average of $1,731 per carat. Um, so as you can see, uh, it's just more of the same. Uh, Lula continues to produce for us and, uh, you know, it's now culminated in a, in a very healthy cash balance at the mining company of some $13 million at, uh, at quarter end. Um, in terms of uh, the next quarter, uh, we expect uh, more of the same. Yes, April is also impacted by the wet season, but as the ground dries out in May and June, we certainly see volumes and, and uh, you know, mining recoveries uh, increasing materially. So overall, we expect the same treatment rates um, similar to those of the last quarter and perhaps more uh, in, um, uh, in line with uh, the corresponding prior year quarters as well. Okay. So good to, think, good to hear things are working well on that side. Now there's been some interesting uh, developments on the political side. Uh, it seems the new president of Angola uh, is keen to raise the diamond production in his country and uh, not shying back from supporting measures uh, on that front. So can you tell us what that could be and what that could mean for Lucapa? Sure, uh, uh, absolutely. Very significant developments in Angola. Um, the Angolan president has uh, tasked his uh, uh, ministries uh, with increasing uh, foreign direct investment uh, into Angola. Uh, he too has given his view on, on what needs to be addressed um, in order to do so. Uh, following on from uh, the, those desires or, or those statements, uh, the Minister of Mines and Petroleum has in conjunction with Ndiyama in our space, in the diamond space, uh, set some very challenging targets of growing Angola's uh, diamond production from 7 million carats uh, per annum right now to 14 million carats per annum uh, over the next four years. So, so certainly um, some strong goals and uh, um, challenges ahead. But in, in line with uh, um, those statements, um, the government has been in active discussions with us and, and other mining companies uh, to discuss how those targets can be achieved. Um, you know, those targets are going to be achieved through, through two ways beyond. Um, obviously, attracting um, additional and significant uh, foreign direct investment into Angola, into the resource sector, but also through the expansion um, of existing operations and, and development projects. Um, right now, the government are, are reviewing uh, their current uh, investment framework and marketing policies. And uh, as you know, Lucapa has been there for, for some 10 years now. Uh, and we are eager to play our part in, in helping Angola achieve those goals. So certainly very exciting discussions, um, major opportunities for, for us as a diamond company, uh, and we'll keep the market informed on, on changes as, uh, as they are made and, and concluded. Okay, uh, certainly sounds promising. Um, we'll look forward to hear more on that. Um, now, as you mentioned, you've been in Angola for uh, almost 10 years or about 10 years and uh, producing for a couple of them now. Um, but you're working on bringing the second mine into pr uh, production in Lesotho. Uh, 2018, uh, second half is, is planned uh, for the commissioning. 
Um, can you tell us uh, where you are with that and what your goals are for this year? Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure Matai is, is just another exciting project in our portfolio of assets, uh, Bjorn. Um, Matai is in Lesotho, uh, is located right next door to the famed Tseng mine. Um, that mine uh, most recently in the news for producing a, a 910 carat diamond, uh, which sold for, for $40 million. Um, you know, uh, prior bulk sampling and trial mining work on Matai have also shown that uh, our resource at Matai is, is host to large uh, and valuable diamonds. Uh, an independent competent person um, or persons have, have put a 1 million uh, carat resource uh, on the project at, a, again, a staggering $1,063 per carat. Uh, that is the second highest um, uh, price for a, a Kimberlite uh, resource in the world. With regards to the development, we, we are well on track to, to deliver our 150 tonne per hour commercial plant. Um, our goal is to deliver it uh, in age two of this year, and uh, we, we, we will do so. Um, you know, that will then take us, uh, 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 will bring in, into production our second producing mine, and we'll be in the unique position, Bjorn, of uh, being the only diamond miner in, in, in the world right now that is mining multiple operations uh, with uh, high value production of, of greater than $1,000 per carat. So uh, quite a unique um, achievement we, we will, uh, or box we will tick uh, later this year. Um, in, in terms of potential there that you asked, um, certainly our, our current uh, development plan shows strong cash generation under the current plan. Um, but we are also currently um, uh, working on a bulk sampling program to grow that resource. Uh, some sections of the Kimberlite pipe have either not been tested or were inadequate, inadequately tested, um, so could not be included in the resource. Our bulk sampling program aims to test those areas and have them included in our future mine plan. Um, that, that program begins this month, so we'll have results from those three specific areas to the market over the next few months, and hopefully an increased resource and, and therefore value uh, attributable, value former tie and attributable to, to Lukapa as, as a 70% shareholder. So that sounds very good, and that means uh, in the near future, as you said, you'll be producing not from one, but two mines with the high value production. Um, what in, in the last couple of months uh, I've seen, though, is that, um, let's say, retail investors uh, and the investing public uh, have been more interested in uh, diamond exploration or, or looking for the next big diamond uh, discovery. Now, uh, you're doing that. You have, uh, you're working, one, on, on the Lulo project in Angola, and two, um, just let's men just mention those two on the Brooking project. Um, can you tell us uh, where you are with that, especially also uh, in Lulo at at Lulo, and why what you hope to achieve this year there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, look, on top of the two producing assets, we we have three uh, exciting exploration assets. Uh, two are, are are at um, you know very very important stages. Uh, firstly, at Lulo where we are recovering exceptional size and quality alluvial diamonds. You now we're searching for, for the source of those diamonds, uh, large or heavy, irregular shaped, uh, brittle type 2A diamonds that show almost no signs of transport beyond um, are, are considered to be uh, uh, geologically proximal to their source. Um, that's not to mention the, the extraordinary frequency with which we are recovering them as well. Um, our advanced uh, exploration program on that ground um, sees us drilling our priority targets in the Coquilo Valley. Uh, we continuously drill these targets and continuously recover kimberlite material from depth um, and sending these for analysis. Uh, you know, th those uh, results will help us identify those targets that we should follow up on. We certainly uh, expect a majority of them to come back with uh, uh, barren results or, or weak diamond potential, but we also expect that some of those results will come back with uh, the right results, um, which will see us honing in on those ones and uh, developing those ones fur uh, further. Um, we certainly believe we have adopted the, the correct strategy here uh, to assess these targets and, and locate what is, is going to be an exceptional um, source um, should we discover that on, on the Lulo ground. Um, at Brooking as well, um, you know, our second exciting project, uh, we, we made a, a quite spectacular discovery um, towards the end of last year and beginning of this year, um, uh, Bjorn. Uh, in our very first drill program on that ground, we recovered lamprite material. Uh, which after laboratory and, and micro diamond analysis, uh, we showed to be diamondiferous. Um, we have recovered 119 macro and micro diamonds from, from just 78 kilograms um, of drill sample, very high concentrations of diamonds indeed. 
Um, we had those diamonds chemically cleaned uh, and were again uh, very impressed with what uh, those results uh, came back with. Uh, a very good population of, of high white uh, colors and a number of yellow diamonds as well. Now, in a country such as Australia, uh, which is famed for producing most of the world's fancy yellow diamonds and up to 90% of the world's uh, fancy pinks, uh, these are very encouraging early signs indeed. So certainly we have exciting times ahead, not just on our producing assets, uh, but also on these uh, development assets. Okay. So sounds like a lot of uh, potential there, but now, as, as we said, you've been, uh, you, or you are working on a lot of projects at the same time, so to speak. Um, all that costs money. Now, I know you're, you're uh, producing good cash in Angola, um, but uh, you, after the end of the quarter, I think, you uh, announced uh, that new and existing uh, investors are willing to put another $16.5 million into the company. Uh, can you tell us a bit more, more about who is that um, and, and what that means for Lokapa, what, what that does for the company? Yeah, sure, absolutely, Bjorn. Um, look, um, as you point out, heaps of potential, um, but a development company um, at certain times of its uh, life cycle does require funding to advance its projects. Uh, we have in the past been very successful in, in managing our limited cash resources across all of our assets and our cost centers. Uh, returns from our cash genera generating assets in uh, Angola, as you mentioned, um, have been put to, to very good use. Um, however, with the advancing stage of, of the development assets, um, you know, there has been a, a large overhang on our stock um, as the market has been expecting uh, a substantially uh, um, or a heavily discounted capital raise to keep furthering our ambitions and our projects. Um, no matter what positive results we released uh, to the market, there always that perception of a, a heavily discounted capital raising seemed to weigh more heavily uh, on the share price. Um, so with any capital raising, um, such as one that we needed to do to further our, uh, our Brooking uh, development and our exciting uh, program there, any capital raise uh, needed to address and remove that overhang and provide us with uh, funding for all of our projects, um, but most importantly also to be raised at a fair and, and non-dilutive price uh, considering the potential of our assets. Um, you know, we, we spoke to very strong uh, existing shareholders uh, and one major backer, uh, they saw the potential that we, we have in our projects and uh, fully supported uh, the capital raise and funding that um, we went ahead with by committing to, to more than $13 million uh, ahead of uh, pressing the button beyond. So a very, very strong show of support. Um, you have immediately seen an increase in our share price as that overhang has, has now been removed. And uh, what this means for Lukapa is that we are now very strong financially. We have secured a large shareholder with significant resource experience and capacity to, to back growth assets. So we're in a completely different position following uh, the conclusion of that capital raise, Bjorn. Okay, that certainly sounds uh, hopeful. Um, at least, let's say, now uh, we, we're expecting, or you are probably expecting, when you put out good news, a better reaction in the market. Is that, that the expectation? That, that is the expectation. I think um, any news that we put out that shows that we need to do, uh, let's say, step A, B and C, which is in addition to our program, um, the market out there will not have any funding concerns um, and, and will therefore uh, hopefully deliver the value that they see in the result as opposed to worrying about where the funds will come from. Surely, absolutely. Okay, thank you. Um, so, let's just sum it up. Uh, where do you think the company will be in six or 12 months uh, from now? Where do you hope? Yeah, look, you know, yeah, we're in, look, uh, we're in mining. Six, six, six to 12 months is, uh, is a nanosecond in the resource uh, space. But um, look, you know, the last three years have, have uh, seen the delivery by the board and management of a, of a very specific growth strategy beyond. Um, you know, to see Lukapa emerge from a, from a pure explorer to a producing company uh, and a brand with a strong management team and, and an exciting suite of uh, diamond assets. I don't see any difference in, in the next uh, six months to a year. Um, I see us continuing to advance our growth strategy. I see us um, becoming a producer from, from two mines. I see us completing the exciting follow-up program at Brooking, completing the drilling program on the priority Kimberlite targets at Lulo. And uh, you know, God willing, I, I think uh, you might possibly see the beginning of a third uh, producing asset from one of those two exploration assets in the not too different, the distant future. So. Um, you know, I see a, a lot more delivery and exciting times ahead. Okay, thank you. Sounds like a good closing remark and uh, we'll be sure to talk to you later then. Great. Thank you very much for having me, Bjorn. No problem. Thank you.